What's going on, everybody? We got Manny here. What's going on, guys? And we got the car. Uh, you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got the car painted. What's up, babe? Hi. How'd you like your drink? So the car's painted, and um, it came out beautiful. And we'll do the reveal in the next week or so. But uh, kind of waiting to do paint protection film and all that stuff before we take the car out. And sadly, until we take it out, we can't show it to you on video because I want to show you guys, you know, some some good shots of the car. But we are installing some new suspension today, so we're changing out the coilovers. You guys know I have the Solo Works coilovers here. Um, those are coming out uh, for anyone who wants them. They have five or six thousand miles on them, so let me know. Um, but we're putting in some H and R coils, and uh, we're actually going to raise the car up a bit because now there's no more rolled fenders up front, and we can't keep rubbing. Uh, so. You know, let's get started on the suspension. Let's do it. Whoop. Okay, so we got our wheel here. Our uh, car's lifted up, of course. So you're going to have to get your car off the ground to be able to do this. And as you can see, we went to drastic measures to uh, hide the paint from you. So I, I really don't want you guys to see this yet. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to take the wheel off and then we'll get into the suspension. So uh, we'll grab the 17s, pull these out and get started there. All right, so we got the wheel off, um, and now we start with the suspension. So this is actually not too bad. So uh, when doing coilovers, there's a few things we have to do. So first of all, if we look up, uh, you can see here we have um, the pinch bolt for the control arms. Uh, that's going to have to come off. Uh, so it's either that pinch bolt comes off, which it's not in focus right now. It's going to focus. All right, so this pinch bolt has to come off, and uh, once you get that pinch bolt off, uh, we could slide this forward after we get the three bolts up top, which I will show you. And then we have one down here. So we have that one 18 millimeter back here. Then this is the 18 miller, millimeter down here uh, that we have to remove. This is what holds the strut assembly to that lower control arm there. So we'll remove that first and then we'll move up to the top. Okay, so we're going to work on this 18 now. So we got the wrench in the back. You can see my finger moving back there. And we got the breaker bar up front here on the bolt. And we're just gonna work this uh, this one out here. So wasn't too bad. Ah. It's out. Yes. Okay, so there's that. We got that bolt removed. Uh, now we'll move to the top pinch bolt. Now that we got that removed, we'll move to the pinch bolt up here. And uh, this one is a 16. Uh, still got something on the back there, so remember you got to hold that nut back here. So, um, and we'll just break that out with a 16. All right. So once that's out, we'll just have to force this bolt out. So if you have a hammer or whatever it be, you can just push it out. Uh, so I'll get a chisel and a hammer and pull that. Times, right? Yes, I have actually. That's why they came out so easily. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So we got that pinch bolt out. Make sure you put these away somewhere. Yeah, now that Manny mentioned it, if you guys have um, haven't done your control arms or any suspension work anytime recently, or you just don't know if anyone ever has, this bolt will be the biggest pain in your butt to uh, to remove. So, uh, fair warning, uh, it's going to be tough to get out if you haven't touched this before. Uh, I have a control arm video if you guys want to look into that and how to remove it if it does get uh, difficult to remove. Uh, so there's some tips there for you. Uh, but once you do put it back, put some anti seize on it, it helps a lot. Okay, now that that pinch bolt is out, we could get these uh, control arms off. So we'll just tap those out. So there goes one. We'll get the other one. And there goes two. Once those are out, we'll move under the hood, and there we're going to have to take off the 316 mils, which you can see down here, and they're holding that top hat in place. Okay, so we got these uh, three bolts right here. So this is the first one we'll get out. So 16 mil. So that's one. Uh, these tend to fall and get very lost, so make sure you just put them sorry, somewhere easy to find. Uh, the second one is back here.
So we'll put that there. And then the third one is sort of under this plastic cover here. So it's a little tough to get to. You'll need a flexible extension and you'll need to kind of shimmy this back. Uh, but you could definitely get to it. There's a, there is enough space there for you. And uh, that one's trying to get lost. <laughs> you can see I have my bird's nest back here. This is where I keep all my wiring. That's why you guys uh, always see the neater engine bay. It's just bad back there. And also might be out of focus. <laughs> it is out of focus a little bit. I was trying to figure that out. Now, once we have those three bolts out from the top, your suspension uh, components are pretty much free. So coilover uh, can come out. Uh, so what you'll have to do is knock it free from this lower control arm. The uh, suspensions kind of want to want to expand here. So you're going to have to tap this out and moving it forwards is the best bet here. So you just take a hammer and move that forwards. And you'll see that weight come off there and now we could slide it out. I hope. <laughs> okay, so we managed to get the uh, coilover out from over this uh, little hump here. So you might have a hard time trying to get it out from, um, I mean, over the little hump of the front lower control arm. Uh, but once you do, we can just take it out completely. Uh, this is why we kept those control arms on. It just makes the process that much easier. And uh, now we can work on them outside of the car. All right, so now we're looking at the top hat here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the two 13 millimeter bolts. Put that down and then this should pry right off. You would hope. It's never that easy. So uh, we'll come in here with a pry bar, just, you know, get this off a bit. There we go. So now this is our coilover uh, from before. This is our solo work. So that's going to go over to the side. And we're going to get our H&Rs on now. So uh, the coilover. So mine are already put together, um, but this, should be, uh, this shouldn't be too bad for you. There is a flat side for each one. So you'll always notice where the, you know, the flat end goes. And uh, the top end fits into the top hat of the car. Uh, so it's pretty hard to get these wrong in orientation. Uh, so you'll figure that out. It shouldn't be too bad. Uh, just make sure, again, you get the flat side down here and the top side fits into the top hat and then you're all good. For the top hat, you have the nut up top. Uh, for these, a uh, recommendation is to have an open-ended or an open top socket set. So you can see this, you can see straight through it. That way you can get on here. And then an Allen wrench goes in here to hold that all down so you could actually tighten it correctly. If you don't have this, a lot of people, what they do is just get an impact and hit it with an impact. And that should do the job, but uh, this is the correct way to do it here. And uh, these aren't too bad. So you can find these like, this is Duralast. So I got this um, as a gift from AutoZone. Uh, but you can find them anywhere really, Amazon and all the other online retailers too. Uh, but now we'll get these in here. So uh, first thing we gotta do is put our tap hot on just like we had before. Uh, so this is what's holding our um, control arms in. One other thing you'll notice is that there are two spots here for these. Uh, for our cars, uh, what you'll notice is on the left side, we're gonna use the nut that's closest to this opening here. So these two should pretty much line up and then we'll have this one here on the furthest side. Um, depending on the car, these might be reversed and fit a different way, but uh, honestly, don't know if it matters much. If somebody knows, please fill us in, but this is how our cars come uh, stock. So this is what we'll do there. All right, so after we fit the top hat on, we're gonna have to put on the two uh, nuts there. So these are the two 13s we had from before. Um, so these have a torque spec. I honestly don't know what it is, uh, but we're just gonna take the impact and give it, uh, you know, a, a few spins and it'll be fine, so. That's fine there, that's fine there. All right, so we're fitting the coilover in, we're gonna put the top piece in first. Uh, so we're gonna have to find those studs and then just guide it in. Uh, that'll give us the most clearance so we could get in here. All right, now once we've guided that in, we'll work at the bottom and what we have to do at the bottom is kind of rotate the coilover a bit and push down on the rotor here. And that'll get us over this control arm. Now, once we're over the control arm, we kind of have to rotate this a bit more. So they meet up perfectly. So you'll see there, 
now we have that lined up correctly and we'll put that bolt through so this holds uh, all of that together for us. Okay, so now we're gonna get our 16s in. We're gonna skip that bottom bolt first because uh, that's kind of a two-man job and I'll need Manny's help there. Uh, so we're gonna feed these through and uh, just tighten these. We won't tighten them all the way yet so we have everything together. Uh, but we're gonna thread them in as far as we can and that way it'll hold this in place for us. Also, it'd be nice if I put the washer in, so that it's, the other, it's the other one. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. So we're going to feed this one in, then we move on to the one in the back here. And then we have the one that's uh, hidden behind my bird's nest back there, which will be tough for you guys to see. But just know that there's one back there. But there, just know that there's one back here that you have to get in. Absolutely. Alright, so we got that threaded in. We'll finish threading these in all the way and we'll head back down and concentrate on the bottom. Okay, so now we'll work on this bottom bolt. So we're gonna push this in and feed that through all the way. Might have to work with the coil over a bit to uh, get it to line up on the other side. Hmm? That's okay. Go ahead again. Okay, so we got that through. You'll have to work with your bushing a bit there to finagle that in but uh, we'll thread that nut on the other side here and after that is threaded in we're gonna work on putting our control arms in at the top and getting that pinch bolt all set up okay so moving on to these now so we'll get these control arms in these are always a bit of a pain but uh, they have anti seize on them and they've been removed not too long ago so they should slide in not too difficultly I hope. So I'll take this bolt out, feed it in through the back. In case we ever have to hit it out, it's much easier to hit it from the outside, of course. That is a major, major tip right there. Make sure that you reverse it for that reason. Yep. And we'll thread that in. And we'll get that nice and tight. And I think we're good there. Whew. Now we'll move on to that bottom bolt, get that 18 mil tight down there. this bottom bolt and uh, I'm sorry we forgot one thing so this one is actually a bushing uh, so we have to tighten this at ride height so we're actually gonna jack this up a bit so that it's about at ride height and then we'll go ahead and tighten that down and what's the reasoning behind that though because a lot of people might not know me being one of them until we did my control arms I didn't know you needed to do that. So basically, uh, these bushings, if you tighten this uh, tight enough, uh, what it's doing is now this uh, the bushing thinks this is ride height. So when you, the car has load on it, the bushing will spin on itself, uh, stressing the rubber out a lot, and it'll cause premature wear. So your bushings just won't last as long as they should. Uh, so it's good to just tighten all bushings at ride height. So when you do these, or you do your control arms up top, you're doing any of the ones uh, with the bushings up here. Today we just, you know, mess with these. Uh, so these are ball joints, no matter where you tighten them, don't move. But if it has a bushing, you should definitely tighten it at ride height for the suspension. Or just at about ride height, it doesn't have to be perfect. And once again, if you want to see the control arm do-it-yourself video, um, Darwin has one up. Yeah, so we'll drop the link in the description below so you guys can check that video out. Alright, so this is about ride height for me, so we'll go ahead now and uh, 
tighten this on so I'll get my wrench in there. So I loosened it a bit first, just make sure we were fully out, and now we're going back in. Right, and that is it. So you can see all the travel, everything that went down. So that weight would be on the bushing all the time while the car's on the floor. And that is what causes that premature wear. So now we're good there. We'll move on to the bolt at the top that we have to tighten and we're all set. So we tightened this here, which is our pinch bolt up top. We have down low where we were just working. And now we'll go all the way up top into the engine bay. And in the engine bay, we'll just get these tightened now. So first one. Move up here, and then we'll get the one that's down here that's difficult for you guys to see. Again, excuse the mess back here, but uh, this is uh, secret access. Not everybody gets to see back here. <laughs> A little bit behind the scenes. <laughs> Call it that uh, behind the false wall look. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just check these two again. Also, for all of you concerned, there are torque specs for these. I will drop a link down below for you guys to find them. I'm not using my gun at full power here, and if you are using an impact, don't use it at full power because you will destroy these. Mm -hmm. This is going into aluminum threads, so just keep that in mind. All right, so now that the suspension is done, we'll put our tire back on. So we got our wheel hanger in here, make it a little easier for us to get this wheel on, so slide that on. Of course it's going to be a pain. There we go. And these things, if you don't have one, uh, they're lifesavers, so getting these uh, bolt holes to line up on these, especially when you have a spacer in there, is a real pain in the butt, so uh, our cars come with one of these, right Manny? Mm-hmm. They come, they come with a plastic one. Um, it sits in your uh, little tire repair kit with the jack and whatnot, your emergency kit, really. Um, but you can order these anywhere. I found this one on Amazon. It's metal. Uh, lasts you a little longer, of course, and you know for repeated use in a garage instead of just emergency use. So, lifesaver. We just got to do front and back on one side <laughs> what do you mean? for the recording Oh, because you don't got to record both sides. Oh, yeah, true. So same shit for the other side. And again, warning about impacts. Impact has a torque stick, so it's limiting the amount of torque I put into those lug nuts, lug bolts. Uh, so don't go nuts with an impact on your hub because you could mess it up. But our wheel is on, we're gonna drop this and we're done with the front suspension. Uh, from then on, uh, the adjustments and all is really up to you going up, down, or whatever uh, with your uh, collar. So. Uh, just keep that in mind you'll have to drop the car let it settle for about 45 minutes and then you could adjust the suspension up or down uh, depending on how you want your ride height you know uh, but we'll move on to the back show you how to do the back now and let's do that all right so we're done with the front we're moving here to the rear so we got the wheel off of course um after you get the wheel off there's a few things you're going to see so first of all you can see this bolt up here we're going to have to remove that i think that's a 19 mil this is an 18 does not fit so yeah definitely 19 <laughs> so there's a 19 mil there and then there are three 16 millimeter bolts that are holding this assembly to the body of the car and then you have the lower bolt which i believe is an 18 as well and i'll show you guys that in a sec okay so this lower bolt is kind of hard to show you but it's right behind this uh, cable here um, and that's what's holding the bottom of the strut in place here in the bottle control arm so uh, we're going to remove that as well 
and once we have all those out, uh, this will just pop right out. So uh, a lot easier than the front, I hope. <laughs> So now we got that nut out and we'll just uh, hit that bolt out and uh, that should release us from up here. So now that we got that top bolt out, we can move on to the 16 mils that are holding this onto the body. So you see one there, and then we have the other two up top. So we'll get those as well. See one there and one on the other side here, right up here. Okay, so I lied. The ones back here, these guys are 17s, not 16s, uh, so you'll need a 17 to get that out, of course. Now we'll move to these top bolts, and we have one on either side. Okay, so those three um, loosen this off of the body, so they should have no pressure holding it in once we get this lower bolt removed. So we'll move on to the bolt that I mentioned that was right behind the shifter cable and uh, we'll move on from there. Okay, so now it's time to remove this lower bolt, which sadly you cannot see, um, but it sits right here, right behind the cable. So we tried to move it a little bit, but it didn't work out. Uh, so Manny's on the other side with the gun and we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Alrighty, go ahead. came off easy. There you go. Okay, so we got this lower bolt out now. Uh, we had to pound it out a bit with a, uh, with a chisel because it didn't want to slide out easily. Uh, but you can see it's covered in antennas there. It was just uh, pressure holding it in from the weight of the suspension. But now we got this out, had to pry it a little uh, from behind these to get it uh, to come forward. But once that's out, um, got to hold this control arm down so you don't ruin your fender. And then you'll see the whole suspension kind of just uh, come forwards for you. Uh, the next thing you want to do is loosen it from down here. So if you look down here, what you're going to want to do is just like hit the suspension um, over towards the back of the car. And this will give it enough clearance so that you could, you know, figure it out and um, pull it out this way. Okay, so once you've pounded this back enough times and the whole suspension moves back freely, um, you see you have a lot of movement back here. So now you can start working your upper control arm down and away, get it through, and then you should be able to lift the suspension out of there. Okay, so now we have the entire strut assembly on the ground here. Uh, so we gotta remove this bolt here uh, that'll allow us to slide our uh, coilover out and uh, slide our new one in. So Manny's gonna go ahead and hit the gun on the other side. And we got that nut off. These are both 19s, 19 millimeter nut, 19 millimeter bolt. Um, and then we'll just hit that out. Also, before we finish pushing this out completely, fair warning, some of these do carry a little bit of pressure. Uh, so just make sure you're not on the receiving end of it going this way uh, because it might hit your foot or wherever you know you're working with so just be careful there looks like it's going to be just twisting it out and that's that bit of pressure we spoke about so just make sure you're not on the other end of that uh, so that is our coilover out and we'll get the new one in all right so we're just about uh ready to put the bolt through so uh, feed the new suspension through, but pro tip, um, when you're doing this, uh, what you want to do is put your suspension to one of the lower settings, so just drop uh, this collar pretty low, 
Uh, that'll take a lot of the spring tension out so you don't have to compress this as much to get the bolt through. So basically what you're doing is compressing the springs and the shock a bit so that the entire assembly slides up and you can get the bolt through here and that'll hold it in place. Uh, so right now I'm going to push down a bit and Manny's going to push the bolt through uh, and we should be set there. But uh, again, that's only possible because we pushed this collar down and took a lot of that tension out. Ready? I'm in there. So we got that through. We'll get that nut on. Uh, that way we make sure that this doesn't slide out on us. And now we'll adjust our coil over to our preferred height. So now you know we'll put that collar up to where we need it. Okay, so we got the coil over fully assembled and uh, we're starting to drop it into place here. So just like we did earlier, sorry about the train, uh, but just like we did earlier, we're gonna put the bottom in first and push that back. Uh, so we could slide this through. Then once we're in here, we can start feeding the bottom in. Wait, there we go. And thank you, Manny. We're going to start pushing in there. Um, now it's uh, uh, two things. So first of all, you know, we got to get this in place to line this up here with the bolts and the holes we had going on here. We also have to um, turn the strut here because it has to line up down below. Uh, let me see if I can get you guys in there. So down here you could see um, the bolt kind of goes through this way and our strut is a little off. So we're going to have to turn the strut assembly a bit to get that straight. So this is how it's sitting right now. We're going to have to turn it this way but without turning the top. Uh, so that'll be not difficult per se, but we'll get the uh, top locked in first so that we, we the, so that way we could do that. Thank you, sir. Okay, our last step was to get this bolt in and tightened. Uh, so you see we have it through already. Easiest way is to jack up the suspension. It'll allow you, uh, again, bushing, ride height, um, and it also makes it a lot easier to get this thing in here. Uh, so we'll start tightening these down, the 219 mils, get the bolt through. Don't forget to put this washer in here. It's like a, basically like a bushing protector there. All right, so we have that tight. Uh, Manny, go ahead, drop the jack, please, slowly. <laughs> Watch your toes. A lot of good sounds in there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're all set there. We'll put the wheel back on and we're done with our suspension install. Okay, so we're done, suspension's in. Uh, car is all set. It's on the ground. I'm sorry. I can't show it to you guys yet um, Soon enough soon enough where I'm actually working on polishing the car today and getting everything ready before we put the film on and uh, we get the uh, Ceramic coat on so uh, that's all going on today So the car should be out and in the wild within the next two to three days uh, Finally getting driven and being protected correctly. So, you know, we can keep it looking nice for a good time but uh, just first impressions on the suspension. So these are used H&R coilovers that went in the car. And uh, we pushed, you know, around the fender area up front uh, and compared side to side before we put them both in. And the suspension is so much stiffer and in the best way possible. It's like so much more robust than uh, what we had going on before. And it feels amazing. So I can't wait to ride this thing, hopefully soon. Again, I don't want to take it out until we have the paint protection film on there. And, we can avoid those rock chips and whatnot. Uh, so thank you for watching. Man, he's gone, but he says thank you for watching as well. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.